everybody, how are we all? Paul79 here, I hope you're safe and well. Welcome to part five of my uh, home EV build where I'm attempting to turn a Porsche Boxster into a GT3 RS 911 and also make it electric. I, uh, I highlight the word attempting, but no, it's, it's going okay. Um, sorry um, it's been six weeks since uh, we last spoke, but uh, rest assured I have been doing stuff on the car, but sometimes, you know, you need to wait a bit before it's worth showing something, uh, something decent to you. Plus, I've also been travelling around the country with my daughter looking at various universities because she's planning to go there next year. But anyway, so in this episode, I'm going to show you all the uh, the bits that I've done and all the nice shiny new bits that I've also bought as part of the electric conversion. So let's go and have a look. Okay, so the last time you saw the front of the car, it didn't have any of the front subframe on. OK, um, so what I was doing is I took it off and I cleaned it all up and I renewed all of the uh, coolant pipes, the crossover pipes that uh, that go um, go on the front subframe. Um, I've also extended them here so you can see the silver um, uh, extension pipes with clamps. The reason for that is, as I've said before, is I need to move this whole radiator forward to make room for the big wheels. Um, I've install, installed uh, coilovers here and what we also have here is my um, air ride. So this is from Stance Parts and uh, if you look on my Instagram posts uh, you'll see that this uh, working in action. Um, while we're talking about the, uh, the air ride, um, so you have one of these cups above the coilover on each side. Um, I have a compressor here that basically when the ignition turns on, it fills up the tank with air. Um, I've put in some sort of fuse uh, location uh, thingamy big, thingamy uh, jigs um, to, um, to wire it all up. If you look on the other side, we've got the same thing. And the actual air tank and junction box I have mounted underneath here where the petrol tank used to be and uh, it turned out to be a very sort of neat solution. Let me show you that now. So now we're under the car and what we can see, and it's hard to see really, but this thing here, this is my air tank. Okay, and then this is the junction box where all the wiring and the pipes feed into. I'll put a picture up of what the actual goes in the junction box uh, next to this. But yeah, that's what I've decided to do. And the way I mounted it, and uh, this could be relevant for any other things if you want to mount in this sort of space, is where we've got these cross beams here that are part of the original Boxster. I've added two metal sort of straps and then I could mount the air tank on it. And it turns out to be quite a neat solution. Now this would all be covered up with, with you know, bumper trays or sorry, undercover trays. Um, so it would be hidden from the elements, not that that really matters. And uh, you're not gonna need to get to it very often, only to just uh, drain any water that comes into this tank you can uh, there's a drain plug there so that should be easily accessible so you may have noticed in the last shot that i've got some lovely shiny brake uh, discs on the car now these are brand new they're um, they're made for the boxster and they're 380 mils uh, in diameter and about yeah three centimeters thick um when i bought this car um, it came with some brake calipers. Now, all the, these were previously blue and um, they had nothing on them apart from the caliper, i.e. there was no pistons, there was no seals, no pads, no pins, none of these things. And uh, I did some Googling and I found that these are actually often R8. They are Brembo calipers. So I have completely refurbished them. I've put, um, there are eight pots as well. So there's eight pistons, eight pots in each. Um, completely repainted them, new pads, everything else. Everything's uh, all good. New um, new bleed valves, etc. the lot. So I can't wait to get these on the car. The only annoying thing is, is the brackets that were made for this car especially are not quite right so i'm going to have to get the brackets remade and then i can pop them on the car but yeah i'm pleased how they turned out not the prettiest but uh, they're nice and big 
and uh, hopefully they will work. So now we move on to the actual EV conversion part of the car. So what you can see here is this is the subframe that I've been talking about that is specially made for the Boxster. Um, it's available from a company called Drift Moto and uh, yeah, it's uh, a fantastic piece of engineering, uh, if I'm honest, the way it's been designed. So uh, let me just talk you through what it is. So basically, these mounts here, these are standard Boxster and then what it is, is this big sort of plate okay that this is where the um the tesla motor will fit you can see one of them there is the motor mount for the motor for the tesla motor and then what else will happen is there's some metal that goes across here with another mount so they basically hold the motor in place um, my motor is not with me at the moment because i'm having it modified so I, it can take the uh, the box to drive shafts so they will obviously go through here and mount up and part of this construction oh if i show you so you can see all this metal here this metal here is all part of this subframe so what happens is is you've got this back plate then you've got these thick pieces of metal that then mount to another bracket here let me put my light on mount to another bracket that then mounts you see those two rusty bolts that's the original engine mount part for the box stuff. So it mounts in these original places. And then on top, which you can see, are these two metal boxes. So these are for the batteries. So the bottom one will take three batteries and the top one will take four. And we'll line the batteries up standing on their sides, their long sides. Um, and yeah, the idea is, is yeah, each battery box will be um, separate. It'll have cooling system and all the wiring built into the inside the boxes. And then on the outside of the boxes, we'll have connectors that connect the power and connect the coolant. Um, but yeah, it's a fantastic piece of engineering um, and I'm really pleased with it. Um, so yeah, um, let's look at it from some different angles. So here we are at, uh, inside of the car. So you can, this is where the original engine used to be. And you can see I've got these boxes here. You can see the lower one there. It's like a little step. So we've got room on the inside of here as well. Um, but yeah, that's it really, nothing that exciting. Um, I need to do some adjustments so the engine lid fits on the top because it's slightly protruding here. But it's a nice tight fit. Um, typically what people do is the junction box for all the electric conversion, they sort of mount on the back of these. Um, but I'm a long way from uh, actually doing that just yet. But yeah, pleased, uh, pleased with all of this kit. So in these past six weeks, I've also been spending quite a lot of money um, <laughs> on getting everything I'm going to need to uh, do this EV conversion. So I spent a lot of money at the uh, lovely guys at Felton um, buying various bits and bobs. So I'm going to show you what I've uh, what I've got in my locker now. So um, first of all, um, this is a Tesla battery. Um, so you're going to have four separate battery boxes, right? So I'm just going to talk you through the, the, the construction of what I plan to do on, on just one of them. So let's say the lower one in the uh, rear engine bay, that's going to have three Tesla batteries, okay? And they're going to be standing up like that. So in order to connect them, I've got these lovely bus bars, right? So you can imagine that's going to go like that and then like that. So I've got lots of them. I've got 12 or 13 of them. And then we're talking about um, BMS. So you're going to need a BMS, which is a battery management system. So I've got the Orion one, uh, again from Felton. Um, but in order to make that work, what I'm going to need to do on each of my Tesla battery modules, you see this uh, motherboard or daughter board or whatever they call it. That's the original Tesla one. And I'm going to need to swap them out with these bad boys right so i've got 14 of these that i need to do and the idea is is these go in its place they're pre-designed they're you know specially designed for the tesla modules so i've bought them uh what else have i got in me uh, in my locker so if i look here on the other side of the battery is the coolant 
pipes. Um, so, you know, you, these are just coolant goes in, it goes around and it comes out again. So you can imagine I've got three stacked up. I'm going to need to um, connect them all together. So I've got lots of T pipes, clips, um, these are called barb connectors so these are going to go on the outside of the uh, battery box if you can imagine so you connect all the pipes up and then on the battery box you'll have one for coolant in and one for coolant out so um, I've got all of that um, also just got yeah a big load of hose um, that's going to uh, be used and here we have the uh, the Orion BMS2 system that I'm planning to use. I think, I can't remember now how many cells I've got. Well, basically I've got four wires. I think it's for 140 odd cells. Um, speaking to the guys at Felton, um, they recommended I go for this, um, even though it's got far more cells uh, than I actually require with my 14 Tesla modules. But yeah, you know, it just looks like a car amplifier, okay? <laughs> And then I've got all of these harnesses that I'm gonna be uh, wiring up at some point, more stuff in the box. So um, yeah, I've been doing a lot of research over these last six weeks of what I need to do. So, you know, and I've just been buying the bits and bobs so I can hopefully plan it all out with everything. You know, this needs to be mounted under cover. I don't know where I'm gonna mount it. I will probably mount it. I might mount a lot of stuff here because remember i'm quite lucky so this is where the the original box to convertible roof would sit and because i haven't got that issue anymore i might be mounting a lot of this stuff here and then covering it up with like uh, an enclosure but i can easily get to it lots to uh, lots to think about but um but yeah i'm very excited so I haven't just been spending lots of money. I have actually been doing some wiring <laughs> um, and actually trying to, uh, to to get this thing going. So my goal is to try and get the Tesla motor spinning by Christmas, right? And it's mid-October now, so I've got some time. But I want to introduce you to my the first wooden Tesla, okay? So what I have here, what I wanted to do is literally plan it all out and actually get it working to a certain extent. So what I have built here is sort of like a mock-up of um, how um, it'll all sort of fit together. But there is one other thing. There is another expensive part that I've bought here, which is this thing here. Now this is called a T2C, T-2C um, controller for a Tesla motor. It's by this company, EV Controls. Expensive piece of kit, doesn't look much, but it does a lot of things. And it enables you to um, control a Tesla motor without actually having to open it up and change any circuit boards in there. But basically it comes with this plug, right? And this plug in conjunction with everything else um, makes it all happen, hopefully, fingers crossed. So I talked to you through what I've got here. So we have contactors here again from Felton. We have a positive and negative contactor and a pre-charge relay. I haven't finished all the high voltage wiring up yet, but these things connect to the T2C controller. We have fuses here for the 12 volts. So my plan is to be able, you should be able to spin a Tesla motor uh, with two normal car batteries like that there. So I'm going to need three. I'm going to need three for the 12 volt volt input for the low, low voltage wiring side. I'm going to need one for that, sorry. And then I'm going to need the other two, which should together provide 24 volts to power the motor. So if I just quickly sort of talk through what I've got here. So this is where the 12 volt will come in. There's a fuse. This switch here is meant to uh, simulate me turning the ignition on. Label it up. Then we've got some more fu uh, fuses here, five amps. These go off and power various things. Um, these are the contactors that I was talking to you about. So they're all labeled up. We have an earth point here. And then with this EV controls thing, you know, there are outputs for many things. Um, so, for example, there are outputs for the reverse lights and the brake lights, which I've simulated here with these two bulbs. Um, what I've built here 
and it's hard to see. But this is basically my switch to tell the motor to go into drive, neutral or reverse. And then also I've got some little lights here that, you know, when drive is selected, that light will come on. You know, that's all connected to the, the T2C controller. Uh, this is a brake switch from a, a, a real Tesla, right? And that's all wired up in, in the right way partly wires to 12 volt supply and partly wires to the T2C. This is an accelerator pedal from a Tesla. So the idea is, you know, that's all connected. I've got the, the, the connector with the pedal that bolts to various, uh, sorry, bolts <laughs> that connects to various things on the, uh, on the T2C. But also another thing you need to have is this famous 23 pin connector, right? This is what the Teslas use, okay? And this plugs straight into the Tesla motor. Uh, and there's lots of wiring involved there. Um, you also have this wire here, which is the for the Tesla motor encoder. But effectively, this uh, connector connects to various things, such as um, the accelerator pedal and stuff on the e in the. Uh, on the T2C controller. So it's taken me a while, I had to be very organized, but yeah, so basically this is ready to plug into the motor. So I'm just gonna put this thing on the floor out the back there when I finished all the other things. And basically we're gonna need to connect the battery power to these uh, contactors and then also the Tesla motor to these contactors. And I gotta finish off something with the pre-charged relay. But I need to get the high voltage wiring first. Oh yeah, also we've got some resistors to wire into the circuit and a fuse, high voltage fuse. But yeah, um, this has been really interesting trying to work it all out and hopefully, you know, I know it looks a bit of a mess, but um, if it all works, then I can li literally just unpick it and wire it all up properly in the car. So there you go, gang. Um, there's no going back now. Spent a lot of money. I've done a lot of things. And um, and yeah, I'm really excited about how it's going. Um, it's going to take a lot of time, uh, as you can imagine, like swapping out those boards on the Tesla modules. You know, that will take time constructing the boxes so but it's quite nice because you can do sort of little jobs in isolation i think when um when i swap out those boards i'll just do it in my house on my dining room table uh, my wife doesn't know about that yet but uh, it's getting cold here so it'd be nice to actually sit down and you, as you can see i don't really have much space to work in um but yeah all good so um i hope you enjoyed this video um hopefully the next one won't be uh in in so long um and yeah take care everyone see you later Bye bye